Alliance and Fnatic, the mm. first game, Alliance let's just be honest, Fnatic got outplayed. They did. We, we said their draft is fine. There was nothing wrong with their draft at all. They had a really good game plan. Alliance, they were there every step of the way. They countered any aggression that Fnatic threw at them. And because they had a bounty hunter, it became really easy on the back of things like Batrider as well. S4 had a blank very early into the game. Even got his four staff at 16 minutes after the fact. It looked really hard from a very early point for Fnatic. So yeah. getting into game two, Ted. Yes, sir. Elder Titan, mm. what a hero. Yes, I, I'm surprised that they have banned the Maiden of Crystals, number two ban. Uh, I don't get that because then you basically have given them Elder Titan. Um, I mean, they've taken the profit, which is, I guess they've taken that away from, from Bulldog, but why would you ban Crystal Maiden and give them Elder Titan? Crystal Maiden's pretty undervalued. I mean, I well, don't get maybe, me wrong, I know she's good, I but she's no Elder Titan. She's no suitcase man. Yeah, I mean, it's a staple gun, but It's a briefcase. Know, apples and oranges, it's I a, It's a suitcase or briefcase. Dude, we had a straw pull. Yeah, you and it lost. was really, Sorry. really close. It's a bottle opener. It's not a bottle opener. What? My God. Well, I mean, what? come on, if you disagree with me, that one's right yeah, in the, okay. that's I, in the I trash can. I have to side with Ted in terms of that is like so not what it is, <laughs> that it's more of a briefcase than it is a can opener. You heard it. He admitted it's anyway, a briefcase. Bottle. Anyway, right? See so, yeah, Very flexible in terms of being able to farm in a dual lane if she's <laughs> positioned defensively. Okay. She can even jungle if you put her aggressive depending on whatever lane yep. you're going I, I, with, I get so. that she's a good hero. But Do you think Elder Titan's a better hero than CM? I think Crystal Maiden is more flexible than Elder Titan. Well, maybe not, actually. You I think because that's, that's he one. works out a lot more? I think because... He's lost a lot of that flexibility. His con contribution to team fights is better than a Crystal Maiden. Yeah. But a Crystal Maiden, I think, helps you win the laning phase a bit more than Elder Titan can. But you can stick him in any lane. You can put him off lane, you can put him mid, or you can put him in a tri lane, and he does the business. Well, of course he does that's the business. That's flexible, That's why sir. they pick him. That's yeah. flexible, And if you it? ask Sam yeah. from Team Liquid... Indeed. He says he's OP. Yeah, he yeah, says he's OP. The game. And whatever Sam says to me is, is he gospel. He invented me. Did he? Yeah. Wow. I told you that story, He right? fucked up. Wow. <laughs> wow. Shots. Toby. So you me. want this to become a two-way cast now? Well, no, but, I mean, we can just... You but, know, I took Ted's chair because it was broken, and then he slams me. Yeah. I, like, took the Wrecked. bullet for you so you Wrecked. can have your footrest. Yeah. And then I, if we're not a footrest, I'm nothing. My feet That's get true. tired, unrested. He's an old man. <laughs> yeah. He is. He's, like, falling apart. Yeah. You should have heard him when he got into the hotel room yesterday. Oh, my God. He was like an elephant. Apparently. In a drunken stupor, and he sounded like he was dying, yeah. basically, as soon as he laid down. I was, like, legitimately it's, it's, concerned. It's because he was drinking with, with, uh, oh, with Robert. Don't drink with Robert. Oh, my God. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. It's a bad move. It was a lot of fun, but, yeah. Anyway, back, back to the draft, huh? Indeed. Maybe. Yeah, maybe back to the draft. Maybe. Oh, they've only picked a couple of I, I, I kind of like the CM ban as the last one. Like You, you were saying like she's really great for controlling up lanes. Fnatic, they did it well in the last one. They controlled their lanes with the Venomancer. They now get an Aegis Prophet, which instantly turns dual lanes into tri lanes, tri lanes into quad lanes. So I have no problem with Fnatic banning that one out. And, they, and I think that Fnatic will have enough confidence. So I, if it's S4, Zelda Titan in middle lane, then it's kind of Harney's problem for the first point. If it's Admiral Bulldog playing the Elder Titan on the off lane, I know we're throwing it out there, um, then you can have Prophet TP and he can use the trees and he can keep Elder Titan away from the heroes. I think they have enough control over the Elder Titan that they don't have to worry a huge amount about his right click damage when he starts swinging. I had no suitcase bottle open or whatever. Um, once he starts trying to bring people down, like, it's, it's going to be trouble if he gets freedom during a team fight. And with Rubik, he can get that as well. But for the first two pickups, it's still very flexible. And it gives Fnatic post potential for Rat Dota. And beyond all, that is the key for Fnatic at all times. Why, yeah. why the Enigma ban? Well, whenever you have a lane that could be considered even slightly greedy, and Rubik is a pretty defensive support with not the greatest counter push, Fidbolt's okay, okay, but it's not great. So you have the susceptibility of being really heavy pushed, and they already have a Nature's Prophet, which if it ends up being a 1v1, you could still get away with sending your Enigma to the jungle. And they don't want to get all their tier 1s taken incredibly early in the game, right. because heroes like Rubik, again, they don't play well from behind. They really want to be, at least some terms, advantaged in the early to mid game. So I don't mind that ban at all actually coming out from Alliance and taking away the initiation potential makes heroes like Nature's Prophet weaker because you can't push a tower off of a kill as much as you can when you have a bat rider who can just start the fight for you. So I think that Alliance fans make a whole heck of a lot of sense here. Same can be said for Fnatic, though. They have three pretty darn squishy heroes, no counter push at all to speak of, yeah. so they take out Chen because they're like, well, we can't really stop a Chen, 
and a Night Stalker, we don't have a disable on our yeah, team. Yeah. We don't have a stun. We have Sprout. I mean, that's it. <laughs> that's not going to work. Yeah. Do you, I reckon they're going to get. I reckon they're going to get Puck here, Alliance. That's who I think they're going to get. Well, not it now, be, but I think they're going to get a Puck. It wouldn't be a bad choice at all. Because you could get him in the Dream Call, drop Elder Titan shit on him. Yeah. It's a good combo. It's a wombo combo. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And because all these heroes are low base health, like Nature's Prophet, Venom, and Weaver, they kind of explode to yeah. burst damage. And when you have Elder Titan, the magic minus, or if I can say it right, magic minus, minus, minus magic, minus magic, yeah, ma magic minus minus magic. Gotcha. Armor, yeah. Right. The okay. M, the M quad. Right. Yeah. It hurts a lot. Basically, yeah. is what I'm getting at. What are you stealing here? Is Rubik, Gale, Shikuchi, Shikuchi also, every time. But yeah. can you? But Venno's ult would be worth stealing, wouldn't it? Well, it's kind of a, a spur of the moment thing. Like if you see an opportunity for a Shikuchi steal, you don't really want to pass it up because as the game goes on, it gets harder to steal because you'll have something like a Lincoln's. Right. And spell steal range is longer than telekinesis or fade bolt, so you have to get close enough to break the Lincoln's first and then spell steal, which uh. becomes increasingly difficult as the game goes on. So if you can get your hands on Poison Nova, it's definitely great. Hmm. Not arguing that. Just saying that if you can get your hands on Shikuchi, then you're kind of unkillable as a support. We saw Aki's Enchantress earlier in the Dream League. I think actually it was one of the later games. Yeah. And he, that was pretty good. I, I like to see a good Enchantress. Well, Enchantress is kind of the same thing as a Chen, except that Enchantress transitions into more of an aggressive damage mid game, yeah. where Chen is more of the defensive slow push. Enchantress can push too and becomes kind of tanky the later the game goes. She's good at chasing too, right? Yeah. Because with the impetus. Because you have Enchant and you have impetus and. If you get even a couple of auto attacks off on a disabled hero, the damage output because impetus is pure damage is insane. It's ah, not mitigated pure at damage. all. Yeah. Pure, Our old friend. Pure damage. We talked about pure damage a lot. Yeah, we did. It, it just hurts. happened to come up a lot. Pure damage. What do you ban now? Toby, what do you reckon? Well, personally, I'm still looking at this, thinking Fnatic's in the same position they were in game number one, where Alliance can play their style of Dota. Throw S4 in the mid, throw Enchantress in the jungle, let Rubik start pulling, find an early level 6, let Lota farm up on the top lane, and give an off lane to Admiral Bulldog. It can be anything he really wants, and they've still got the Bounty Hunter in the pool as well. So you've got all these options for Alliance just to play passive-aggressive style wow. Dota. There mm. goes your Bounty Hunter. Um, but okay. I thought for Fnatic that they had their potential to be very aggressive up on that top lane. This, for me, I'm really wondering where they're going to throw these heroes, because my first inclination is that this is Nature's Prophet middle lane by Hani. Well, but that would be the easier way, wouldn't it? Because yeah. you can just say, well, Aira's going to play Weaver. Yeah. And then you're going to have Trixie on Bounty. Yeah. Fly or no tail playing. But, but uh, what, what I was thinking was it was an aggressive trial lane on top. Yeah. That the Prophet comes in very early on. You shut down the area. Because obviously you can have Enchantress coming in very early on too with two creeps. That's the beauty of Enchantress. She's such an, an early active hero. Uh, and then you've got Rubik, who's basically got telekinesis and doesn't really pack a wallop until level three. So you've got all of that pumped in, and then you don't have an Elder Titan who can move up very easily unless he's going to TP himself up there. So then you've got Alliance who can be caught really on the back foot by this, because you've still got Venomancer and Weaver. Weaver who can dive and be very maneuverable. Venomancer who can make the enemy very unmaneuverable. They just need a really good controlling support hero to go with this lineup, and they can do what I kind of wish they did in game number one. Not just go for this dual lane kind of thing, and like, because they can't grab another The dual lanes were okay, though. Yeah, no, the lanes I, I, got, were I got nothing okay. against dual lanes, but I got something against letting Alliance have the space to play their game. I think Vinayas really got to try and stop that. Ooh, Storm Spirit. I do like Storm quite a bit. Yeah. And this is the thing about trying to pick a split push oriented lineup against Alliance, is they are the Rat Dota Kings, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They won TI because of Rat Dota. Now, they know how to play against it. So they're going to pick a really good initiator who can also substitute as a semi-carry in Storm. Mm -hmm. So now you have a hero against Fnatic who up until this point have no disables at all. They have no way of stunning him. They're going to have to probably go something like early Orchid on the Nature's Prophet just to have some way of holding him down. And I would imagine that the Storm can probably feel pretty comfortable during the early game because looking at Fnatic's lineup, who is going to move to rotate on mid? Exactly. Like there, there is nobody. That's what the second supporter's got to do Fnatic's right now. Fnatic's lineup? Well, I'm saying, like, if the Storm what about goes 1v1... Prophet? Oh, Pro Prophet, can Prophet, can, Pro Prophet can TP, but he cannot control the Storm Spirit. Yeah, right. he's hard enough to control, but and, yeah, you're and right. The, and no the, time, the timing is going to take to get the Orchid for Nature's Prophet. It's going to yeah. be a very long time unless they get that early tower goal. Yeah. I still want to see a, a, a more, like, a higher level of push, not just waiting for the Weaver to get the, a death yeah, later up and running. The Weaver's not going to do a damn thing for some time. 
So they do need time, don't they? This is, uh, oh, there you go. Hanny's Invoker. Are so we really going to run Jungle pro jungle Prophet? Which Hanny Invoker are we going to see? Well, The Hanny I'm Invoker assuming... that could not miss a Sunstrike and was, like, just killing everything Yeah, on that the map was really Because that insane. was insane. Yeah, he played a spectacular game there. But for me, I like the Invoker because it's a hero who can actively bully the Storm in lane, which because they know that their lineup isn't really that great at rotating, they say, okay, we're just going to pick the mid lane that we know can beat the Storm. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not going to be a landslide victory, but it's going to be enough to the point where the Storm is going to feel some pressure. And Alliance, they answer back with mobility, and they pick up an AM.